What's up, YouTube? Dirt Nap Bros back again. We're here today. We're gonna do a review on a few crossbows that we have and we use. Uh, we have everything from a lower price range to a Ferrari, the high price range down here. And we're gonna basically just go through these, and then uh, later on we'll do reviews separately on each one. But today we're gonna cover the basics of some crossbows that we use for uh, hunting here in North Carolina. And yeah. If we start giggling and laughing, please forgive us. Our wives are sitting over there making fun of us for doing these. Our kids say they're cringy, so we're gonna keep doing them. HyperTech 420 over here runs for about $800 at Cabela's. It shoots pretty dang fast. It is a super nice crossbow, very compact. Shoots at 420 feet per second, hence the 420. Um, and only weighs 7.9 pounds. I have hiked this thing in and out of places with no issue. My wife hikes it in and out of places with zero issue. Um, I will tell you, it is kind of hard to uh, to charge back, and we'll get into that in a minute. And it kind of scares the crap out of you every time you charge it because of the way the charging cord is shaped, um, which we'll go into further when we start actually reviewing it. The next one is the 10 Point Titan SS. So I actually got a heck of a deal on this thing. So you can get this on Amazon right now for $5.99. Um, it runs at 340 feet per second. Um, and it's pretty dang light. I've carried this thing everywhere for mm -hmm. quite a while. Yep. And on the far left, we have the... Uh, this is the Rocky Mountain 405. This is my wife's crossbow I bought for her. And it runs for about 269, 270. Um, so kind of a lower price range, but they are very dependable. I like it. And oh yeah, yeah FPS on this one is obviously 405. 405. Yep. So crossbows in general kind of get a bad name um, for various reasons. Um, for a while, you weren't allowed to hunt with them unless you were disabled. Um, and a lot of people still say it's like a cheater's way of archery. So I picked up a crossbow originally because when we well when i first started getting hunting a couple years ago i started looking at compound bows and people were talking about things like whisker biscuits and quivers and cams and draw weights and draw lengths and you know it, it peep sights and kiss buttons and it was a little overwhelming so i walked in and i said look i want to i want archery because here in north carolina it extends your season from september to january um and i said hey i I don't know what I'm doing. So I walked in and the guy said, you want a crossbow? Um, I didn't know anything about it being cheating or disabled people only at the time. So I started looking into it. You know what, I, I really like it. It's, um, they're easy to draw. Put your foot in the stirrup, grab the handles, make sure the ropes even, pull it back. Make sure your hands aren't up here because it'll take your damn hands off. So when you're holding it, um, and you just sight it in like any other weapon. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. And. I know people say it's cheating, but I disagree with that. Uh, my opinion is uh, the most effective way to shoot a deer or any animal you're trying to take is the best way. Um, that's why I approve of crossbows. And I know back out west, that's where originally I'm from. They're basically illegal everywhere, but here in the south, they're legal. So why not use one? They're easy. And plus, like for beginner hunters, it's a great option. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And mm -hmm. you could take anything with these. So all three of these um harvested a deer this year with no issue um the, i think zero issue none nope they were, they were all good nice good blood trails punch through um they're quiet right up till you go to fire it um there's little to no recoil so if mm -hmm. you've got somebody who who has a bad shot anticipation that's not a real issue with these and you know what if you get that bog death grip that we did a review a couple weeks ago on and toss this on here and set it in a blind, even your kid could take a deer with this. I mean, I'd, I'd be willing to put my six or seven year old out there with a crossbow and a, a bog death grip. Uh, here in North Carolina, there has to be a 100 pound pull minimum, which all these have, they vary. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds kind of daunting to some people. Um, I know when I first started, I was like, I don't know if I could pull 100 bucks from, or 100 pounds for nothing. I know my wife said the same thing, and I think your wife said the same thing too. Mm -hmm. But you know, my wife has no issue charging any of these except for the Rocky Mount 420. Um, 
and I believe your wife was the same, right? Yep, so yeah, so yep, for the 405, this one, yeah, the 200 pound draw weight, and yeah, so it's great. Like, I can charge it, no problem with the, the charging cable it comes with. Uh, my wife had a little problem, not because of the charging, but this crossbow is, is a little short, so she couldn't get it, you know, slip her foot into it and then charge it back. So what we did, so we just got her the uh, the pulley. Uh, it's basically it's like a basically a winch for your for your crossbow. You hook it up and you start cranking it. And it charges it and then you release it and it makes it like literally like five pound yeah. pull weight. So super easy. That way, if she wants to go on her own, I don't have to cock her crossbow or or, or him cross <laughs> cock her crossbow. Which we have done this which season. We have done this season. Yep. So if you just take this, you can do it out in the field, do it herself. And so this is the, the cocking rope or charging rope that he was talking about. So they come in various lengths. Usually they're twice as long as what you need. Um, they've got some hooks on them right here. So basically you just, there's usually a slot back here in the back that the rope rides in. You take it, you slide it in, it hooks up, put it in and put your foot in the stirrup and pull as hard as you can and it's gonna come. They'll lock in back here. Um, there's a couple of weird things about these, right? So I thought it was really weird that when you cock them, they have to be on fire. They cannot be on safe. Matter of fact, if it is on on safe, it will not lock into place, um, and you could potentially damage your bow by by releasing all that energy and even hurt yourself. I, I, first time I I tried to cock a crossbow, I didn't know that, and I took off a, a good chunk of my thumb trying to hold it with by the end. Um, so these do have to be on fire, and that's because of the safety mechanism. So as it pulls back, the string locks in and it clicks it onto safe for you. The other thing is with every bow, you don't ever want to dry fire them. So it'll put all of the kinetic force, instead of onto the arrow that's sitting here, it'll put all the kinetic force onto these limbs and it'll crack these limbs. I've actually had that happen. Um, I bought a super cheap bear. Um, hunting season last year, yep. opening day. Yep. Sounded like we heard a crack in the blind. I thought the cheap chair I was sitting in broke. So we called it, got out the blind, took a look around. It turns out the charged crossbow, the limb had started to crack. It's extremely dangerous. A limb could explode, um, arrow could randomly take off. Like it'd be, These things pack enough kinetic force that it could seriously hurt you. Um, so what they make instead of dry firing them is if they make these tips like this, they just punch into the ground. This one's all filthy because it does. I'll tell you what, when this is fired in the ground, it it makes a loud ass thud. The other thing you could do is throw a field tip on the end of one of your arrows and just fire it in the ground. Um, as long as you've got a decent enough distance, you're not going to lose that arrow. Um, I would say point it probably 20, 30 feet in front of you, um, kind of down at the ground and fire it. And it'll that arrow will take all that kinetic force instead of those limbs. So to protect your limbs. Um, I think that's really about it. Crossbows. Man. Uh, maintenance. So maintenance oh, on nice. these. So maintenance on these is, is very simple. It's every five shots. All you have to do. That's another reason why I love this one. See, this right here is your uh, it's your uh, wax for your strings. After every five shots, just take it, rub it on there, rub it on your fingers, and all you do is re-waxing your uh, your uh, your strings on your on your bow. And that's all you really need to do. Other than that. Um, that's it. Every that's it, yeah. two to three seasons, maybe get a sh go take it to a bow shop, yep. get it inspected and restrung. Um, outside of that, they're, they're low maintenance, mm -hmm. easy to use, easy to transport with, um, and at least here in North Carolina, they're not treated like firearms. I think at one point I was reading that they used to be where you needed like a pistol purchase permit to buy them, but they they changed that. And so now you don't. You can literally walk in, drop cash, and walk out. And you know, you go to a good archery. Um, store or, or even a Dick's or a Capella's or something like that, they usually have a spot you can shoot it. You can have this thing sighted in before you even leave the store. Um, oh, sighting it in. Big key thing. If you're sighting it in with 100 grain field tips, yes, you're going to want a 100 grain broadhead. Mm -hmm. You can't take a 100 grain field tip, sight these in at 20, 30, 40, 60, whatever yards you want to sight them in at, and then throw 120 grain field tip in. Yep. You're going to get a lot of drop as that arrow is moving. You're going to miss your target. Yep. Also, too, with that, the knocks. If you change your knocks out. Yep. Yeah, I learned this one the hard way. So mm -hmm. 
I bought illuminated knocks. And so if you're not familiar with what those are, once the string hits them, there's a little button that it pushes and the knock, uh, can you pull out a knock? Yeah. The, the knock, which is this piece that Stefan's grabbing right now, it glows. So as it hits the deer, bear, turkey, whatever, it's it's this piece right here on the end of the arrow. That's the knock. So as it, as it the string makes contact with these, it, some of them will light up. It makes it super easy to find if you're looking for where your arrow landed, say you wanna go to see if there's blood on it or you just wanna know where you hit, right? Makes it super easy to find. You cannot, with those those light knocks, they have to be set a certain way, the, the bolts do. Um, and most of these do, like you'll notice there's at least one of these on every one that you buy. So you got two green, one white. I would assume the white goes down. Um, on this one, I've got two red, one white, the white goes down. On this one, I've got two white, one orange, the orange goes down. Um, and if you look at that, that kind of correlates with the way the string needs to make contact with the knock to absorb that kinetic energy. Um, so when I shot this and didn't have that knock in right, it was spun just a little bit. Um, my arrows were, man, they were far left. Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't make sense to me. I recited this thing like three times before I realized, oh crap, I'm an idiot. And I just need to make sure it's it's seated correctly. I'm lucky that Ten Point takes what's called an Omni Knock, so it doesn't matter how I seated it. The bolt absorbed the kinetic energy. It just meant that my arrow was going to be off and that it wasn't going to illuminate the way I wanted it to. So I think that's about it for crossbows. Yep, and then uh, yeah, we'll do uh, each one of these individually here in the future, <laughs> and then break them down more. Yeah. Other than that, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and uh, yeah, see you next time. Yep.